and I make sewing, design, and DIY videos. I actually just got home from work, and so I'm going to change into my wonderful, comfortable, stylish loungewear. So today I'm going to show you how to take a pair of leggings and a t-shirt and use it as a pattern to make different variations of loungewear. There are so many designs you can come up with just from using these basic garments. So I would love to see what you guys come up with. Just tag me or hashtag on Instagram and I would love to share it. So without further ado, let's get started. So to start, I folded the fabric double the width of the crotch line. I drew a line up the center, measured my desired inseam length, and then drew a perpendicular line. I then traced out the front and back of my leggings, leaving the leg wide. I did the same for my cream colored pants but added a 3 inch gap along the center line to create a slightly more loose fit. You can add more to get an even more loose silhouette. From here on, the construction is the same for both. Sew together the back and front seams, then open up the pant and sew the inseam. Next take a 1 inch elastic, the exact circumference of your waist, with seam allowance. Sew it into a loop, then serge it to the wrong side of your pant waist. Once this is done, flip the waistband under and top stitch. Also hem the pants. I made three tops all with an easy drop shoulder, but with varying necklines and sleeves. Fold your fabric four times so that you have a two layered fold. Lay your folded t-shirt with the front facing out on the fold. Trace the back neckline, shoulder, and follow the general curve of the sleeve to make a drop shoulder and trace under and around the t-shirt. Then separate the layers and cut the front neckline from a single piece. Next you want to cut a 2 inch wide strip at least as long as the neck circumference. For some reason I cut it 1 and a quarter inch wide, but that's kind of too small since you will be folding this. Fold this strip in half and iron, then walk around the neck circumference with seam allowance at the beginning stretching as you go so that the neck lays flat when sewn. Once you measure the front half, fold back the fabric and notch at the shoulder. Do the same for the back, adding a notch at the center and finishing it with seam allowance on the other end. Sew these ends together, then sew the full circumference of the neck. Next, sew the shoulder and underarm seam. Then to finish the sleeve, I created a sort of cuff. I made a 3.5 inch wide 
piece of fabric that folded in half to create a cuff and I made it as long as the sleeve opening. To finish the hem, I left it raw and sewed a stitch along the hem. For the long sleeve v-neck, we are going to repeat the first steps for cutting the t-shirt and trace the body of the t-shirt, but this time I'm making it longer. I wanted a slit so I measured up 5 inches and made a shallow snip or notch. Then I created a v-neckline on the front piece. For the sleeve, fold your fabric 4 times again and from the double fold measure the same width of your sleeve opening at one end and at the other end half of your wrist measurement. Make sure to add sufficient ease. I added about an inch overall for my wrist. Cut out and add a snip at the fold to mark the center of the sleeve. I then created cuffs 6 inches thick and matched the length of my sleeve at the wrist. It would have been a little more flattering if the actual sleeve was a little bit bigger than the cuffs so that the cuff pulls it in a bit, but you can decide what look you want to create. Next fold the sleeve and cuffs with right sides together and sew. Turn out and fold over the cuff. Match the cuff to sleeve right sides together and sew. You can alternatively sew the sleeve in flat to the body first, then finish the sleeve and cuff after. It would be much easier. I don't know why I did it this way, but it's just another way that you can do it. Next, sew the shoulder and side seams of your shirt body, then apply the sleeves right sides together. Next, you want to stretch your neckband along the neckline, letting it extend a quarter inch past the v-neck point for seam allowance. To prep for sewing, overlap the neckband ends at 90 degree angles and pin at the v-neck point. At the sewing machine, start your needle a quarter inch from the v-neck point at the very center of the overlapped neckband as shown. Then pivot the band to line up with the side of the v-neck and sew about one and a half inches back stitching at the beginning and end. So there you can see where I started the stitch. Then you want to snip to the v-point close to the stitch and sew the other side in the same way. After this, you can take it to your serger or use a zigzag stitch and complete the rest of the neckline. To finish, I iron up the hems and fold over the slits twice before sewing. I sew the hem first with my cover stitch, then I sew up the side slits on the straight stitch. For the cropped mock neck, once again, trace out a drop shoulder top. 
This time I created a wide sleeve. For the mock neck, cut out a six inch thick piece that is wide enough to stretch over your head. You have to determine this based on the stretch of your fabric. Then sew the neck seam and shoulder seams. Next, fold the mock neck over with the wrong sides facing in and the right sides out. Then stretch it around the neckline right sides together with the seam at the back of the neck and sew. Next you want to apply the sleeves and here I'm showing you the flat method which is the easiest way. Then you want to sew up the entire underarm. And finally hem the sleeves and the shirt hem. Because it was so short I just did a cover stitch across the hem to finish it and left it raw. Thank you guys for stopping by and watching this video. I hope you guys gained a lot of ideas for how you can customize your own loungewear using your own clothing. And if you guys like this video, please give me a like. And if you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button down below. I will see you guys next time. Bye!